right. Hillary's been busy giving advice to Democrats running for president in 2020. But from the sounds of it, she's still just making excuses for her loss to President Trump, which, frankly, most Democrats, most in the media cannot accept. And Mueller is probably worse than that for them. Take a look. I think it's also critical to understand that, as I've been telling candidates who have come to see me, you can run the best campaign, you can even become the nominee, and you can have the election stolen from you. Oh, poor Hillary. Well, maybe Hillary will also advise Democrats to maybe not campaign in Wisconsin. That was a brilliant decision. Joining us now is America First Action Senior Advisor Sean Spicer, Salem Radio, nationally syndicated host. All right, I actually decide which person I'm going to ask the first question to based on who <laughs>, laughs more. Larry, you won tonight, but not by much. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> well, well, I'm just saying, I mean, um, your, your reactions are priceless, but, you know, it's now a new vast right-wing conspiracy. But the problem for Hillary is the Attorney General was clear. He's going to investigate the rigged investigation into her. That's problematic for her. Tell me about it. You know, in, in 2004, when uh, John Kerry was losing to George W. Bush, he had a reporter with him as they were watching the returns. And John Kerry said, and I quote, I can't believe I'm losing to this moron, close quote. They think even less of Donald Trump than they think of George W. Bush. They think of him as a racist, a fascist, a dictator, a, a moron, you name it. She still doesn't understand why she lost. Donald Trump and the Russians had nothing to do with, as you pointed out, her failure to set foot in the state of Wisconsin. Donald Trump had nothing to do with her arrogance in assuming the so-called blue wall would be there for her. Donald Trump and the Russians had nothing to do with her putting an unsecured server in her basement and then lying about it and destroying 30,000 emails that were under subpoena. She did that. She ought to look in the mirror. I can't believe the candidates are coming to her to get, even get advice in the first place. Why would they? You know, that's a good point. I wouldn't want it. Um, you know, Sean, 2004 and 2016 had one thing in common that no, everyone overlooks. And that is the exit polls were wrong. The exit polls yeah. showed John Kerry was the next president and Donald Trump didn't win a state. And I remember I actually called then candidate Trump and I said, you don't poll well. I don't believe this. And I told him the 2004 story. Dick Cheney called my radio show that day at 535 on Election Day 2004 to talk to Florida and Ohio. Um, my question is this. I think that the media started out their coverage election day 20. They were so happy because they thought they knew the answer. And then as the night went on, <laughs> <It> sure <did. laughs> you could see the significant change and shift in mood. And by the end of the night, it was just an outright funeral for a lot of these folks. They couldn't believe it. I actually think their reaction to the Mueller report is as bad or worse. They can't handle that they're own collusion conspiracy theory narrative was all a hoax and a lie. Am I wrong? Right. No, you're not wrong at all. In fact, the, but the other point is, is that a lot of the folks who cover these races haven't taken the time to really understand how the game is played. Number one, electorally, but number two, how data has really changed how elections are won and lost. And they look at these public polls that, frankly, don't are not that accurate because they are the cheapest ones available to the media. And they, they kind of look at it from that perspective, as opposed to looking at the turnout models, who's up and who's down. But let me just say four things about Hillary Clinton. Number one, I hope she keeps giving advice to candidates. Number two, she didn't didn't run a great campaign. <laughs> number three, number three, it's not like this was close. It was 80 electoral votes or just shy of 80 electoral votes in states like Michigan, Pennsylvania, all throughout the country that, that Donald Trump turned from blue to red. So it's not like this came down to a single state or one congressional district, Maine, second district or something. This was a big win. But number four, and this is important, this is what Hillary Clinton said when she questioned Don, what Donald Trump was saying. She said, we've been around, meaning the United States, for 240 years. We've had free and fair elections. We've accepted the the outcomes we may not have liked them. He is talking down our democracy and I for one am appalled. Then she sent out a tweet 
where she basically said Donald Trump refuses to sect us by doing that. He is threatening our democracy. So at the time, the media was in an outrage that Donald Trump was threatening, is going to accept the outcome of the election, and this was undermining the integrity of our institutions. And yet no one has a problem right now with Hillary over and over again undermining the outcome, which is not in question. All of those states, Trump won because he ran a better campaign. But here's, here's going forward, Larry. There's now going to, let's say it's crazy, Uncle Joe. Well, Russia and the chaos, well, that all happened on <laughs> right. Biden Obama's watch. The crappy right. blank economy was on their watch. The dopey Iranian deal was That's on right. their watch. Now it's going to be Trump's record versus their record. And are you better off than you were four years ago? Add to that, you know, I, he, how do they justify what they did for eight years and compare it to the incredible record-breaking success we've had? You know the answer to that. They scream racism. They scream sexism. Oh, they Joe scream xenophobia. They scream homophobia. That, that, that's, all, that's all they've got. This has been a great economy. Donald Trump uh, has delivered what he said he was going to do. Obama gave us the worst economic recovery since 1949. Not a single year, 3%. We had 3% last year. We got 3.2% the first quarter, so the economy is rocking. Out will come the race card, the sex card, the gender oh, card. Did. That's all they've got.